All right, welcome back, guys. We got two absolutely expert Zerg analysis type people, aka GMs, aka wonderful folks, Fenner and Namshar, both joining me on the cast. Of course, Namshar is the one with the funny accent. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you said I had a funnier accent as well, Ilya. Yeah, but you know what? You have the British thing, so it's a little bit sexy at the same okay. time. Namshur's like that guy that'd be your friend. Nam uh, Fenner's that guy that's like, kind of got a secret crush on, but you really don't want to tell the world. Anyways. <laughs> wow, Rifkin. <laughs> Rifkin's secret feelings aside, welcome back to the broadcast. We find ourselves in game number three, which, first off, is just fantastic in and of itself, but this is a ZVZ here in the round of eight for the Dragon Invitational. Guys, again, I want to stress, go to Dragon Stream. Even if you don't want to listen to Dragon Cast, at least have it open as a sign of respect, as a big thank you for having him allow us come cast the tournament. Uh, but getting to these introductions properly, spawn here in the top left corner of the map, the Blue Zerg player from Yoey Flash Wolves, Linux. Um, in the top right of merry go -Round, we've got our red Zerg player playing for KT Rolster. It is Sleep. You know, I think the big thing uh, for you, name Shar, is you probably don't care so much about your sleep, but Fenner and I, guys, waking up at a good 5 a.m. brisk in the morning for you all to bring you this broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. Yeah. That's uh, not that at all. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had a good night's sleep. <laughs> I'll pull not good with the old sleep, but this when is life is here. Then it's, huh. good. it's unbelievable that you would make that sort of joke. <laughs> <laughs> sort it wasn't intentional, like that's the thing. Oh, I thought we were just cycling through the Zerk players still left in the tournament because you're talking about sleep and then <laughs> Hyun and life. Alright, anyways, guys, uh, this is a funny map. I think positionally, this yeah. is a very awkward one, too, because. Well, there's not a huge, huge advantage for spawning like this for one player versus the other. As we can see, the Overlord uh, had, you, even at sleep, gone the right direction. For uh, Lena, I gets here a little bit. A little bit, I guess, sooner than that of sleeps. I mean, the oh, sleep doing the six link thing again. Yeah, maybe. Even though he hasn't seen anything, I mean, some people do do this, and you can catch people off guard. But I don't think he's going to catch Lena off guard. He's got the first scout on the Overlord. He's gone pull first. It always oh, hiding the oh, sneaking them out, sneaking the links out. Uh, yeah, yeah okay, I, I like that. that. Path. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually really awesome. He's he's waiting for that one. He knows where it is. He knows the vision of it, too. He's just waiting yeah. and waiting. Wow. Secret agent link. Secret. But, but yeah, okay, so just talk about this real quick. I've done this before as well, and I think the reason he made those links is because his overlord didn't give him scouting information, maybe. Yeah. And then he, then he was like afraid maybe Linok is actually onning him, and he won't know about it. So if he just makes drones instead, if there's an, all -in, like an early pool coming, he might take like a lot of damage to it but if he just makes yep. the links blindly like if he hides them from the overlord he can still you know do a little bit of damage and be fine and then if he doesn't make the links he's all of a sudden playing a bit risky so he's just playing it safe and trying to do the damage but nice position yeah, by Lena there sleep with the pool first every game and this kind of six ling opener as well the 15 pool 15 hatch 14 overlord he seems yeah. to be playing really safe especially with the way he played that road trip in the last one. game and I think this is a map that specifically favors aggression due to how the natural is laid out. You've got that yep. huge yep. ramp. Everything is so wide. And then the third base is pretty far away as well. So who's going to pick up speed first? There's no gas coming down yet for either player. <laughs> well, again, I can think it really falls into that. I'm a little bit worried about bailing, so I'm going to play gasless. I'm going to get that extra queen. I'm going to get that cruise thread like we see for Lena. So that you can build the evolution chambers of the road toward at the front. Yeah. But uh, double gas is coming down for Lena. Can I recognize it? Okay, okay. I think I know what's up. The problem is, I don't really like gasless on this map. What do you think, Namshai? Because, like, mass ling with that big ramp, it takes so long to spread creep over there as well. It's It takes so long to wall off. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess it kind of depends what opener you're up against. Like, when both players are playing so safe, so kind of. Yeah. Uh, just laid back, just uh, you know, opening really safely with the, those 15 pulls. Then I guess it's fine because any sort of link, uh, speed, speed link time isn't going to be that quick, unless it's like a cheeky, you know, like 15 gas, 15 pull, 15 hatch, the kind of mind game. But uh, both players playing so safe, I guess they realize that both players playing so safe, and that's why they're opening gas yeah, again. But I do, I do agree. You know, if there, if there was a big speed link time coming, it would be really hard. Like Lino could be dead. Like look, look at, look at his defense right now. I guess he has. Scouted a little bit, so he knows he's safe. But yeah, I do not like Gasless too much. Uh, he did on this map, but if you get the creep down early, you can still wall off. But I, I kind of think the Gasless style just in general is being phased out. I, I'm actually, you know, the, see the first yeah. time was okay. It made sense because of the bailing aggression in game one. But doing game three, yeah. I, it's just that's that's paranoia outright, is what that is. 
Yeah, there's yeah, this and... kind of phase like three to six months ago where gasless was basically the only thing I think right now, Shah, oh, yeah. but recently yeah. it's started to go out of style just because people have learned how to play against it. They know if they get the speed, they get the faster, then you just yeah. get a couple of drones on there and then you've got the big economy and you just outmass them. And with a lot of builds as well, you can you know you can react with speedling. You can you know you can not get yeah. speed uh, if your opponent if your opponent is going gasless. You can like not go speed, and then your opponent has to play as if you're getting speed. Like you can, there's so many mind games you can do. You can abuse your opponent, but yeah. If, and, and and again, we see Linux with that fast third, despite none of the players having speed, and Sleep going for that four gas into the later third. So, I mean, I'm gonna favor favor Linux position a lot again, and. Sleep is just playing so, so, so safe. Like both Let's... players opening 15 pool every game, and none of them going speed. And I, I, I usually make jokes about this on the cast, but like a lot of the times, Roach Wars are kind of that awkward, no rush, 10 minutes sort of phase scenario. And when it comes down to something like this, where there's no aggression in the game, there's no harass going off. It's, it's about how crisp your builds are. And well, Sleep does this thing where he makes all the extra drones and transfers them later. I gotta tell you, just the larva production of having the hatchery up this much sooner, this much earlier, the potential injects, the potential creep spread, I just, I don't yep. see the benefits to not going for that faster third. Yeah, it's, it seems like Sleep's got a build order in his head and he's not changing it much based on what his opponent's doing, whereas Lenok, he sees the gasless, he knows he can get the fast head, he's already got 17 drones on the third base. As long as he defends this little attack from Sleep, he's gonna be golden. Um, yeah, no, and he should be able to. <laughs> I saw that one coming, Rick. <laughs> it's just oh. like, ah, yeah. I gotta go with low-hanging fruit, right? Yeah. And I mean, oh. Lilac will be able to hold this, because Sleep has been droning on those two bases, as we already talked about. But Sleep does have the slight upgrade lead, but that's all he has going for him. Lilac has a really nice setup, and I think Lilac just droned harder this game than last game, because yeah. he realized in last game, Sleep did go for those drones on two bases and then just transferred them. So in this game, Lenok is like, all right, I'm just gonna drone even harder to this game because I'm not afraid of a massive one-one roachall in. So he's oh. got an even better setup than than the last game. I know we're casting some awesome creams, but I want to dial this back to like the more casual for a true moment because I do see after that game it ended by the way the last one. A lot of people were asking, like, you know, it's Roach Wars. It's, these battles are so random sometimes. But the thing about Roaches, guys, they have a really slow attack and a lot of overkill most of the time. You know, a Roach with 10 health is still going to eat a volley from another 10. That's so much overkill, so much wasted damage. So when you have those concaves, when you have that spread, it increases mm. the chance that the Roaches don't focus fire at one Roach, but instead spread their DPS a lot more better, thus more efficiently. So when it comes down to number games, yes, sometimes the player with more wins, sometimes the player with more loses. A lot of this comes down to positioning for Roach Wars. Yeah, it's all about the positioning. And uh, once again, Lee not going for the same style. This is what Koreans love. The tunneling claws, five gas, constant roach production, even getting the macro hatch this time, because he yeah. doesn't want to slip on that macro. And all he's going to do is just try and catch Sleep out of position. He's going to like sneak roaches in, hope that Sleep sends too, too many back, and then just take the main engagement. But I think Sleep's got enough here for the defense. It's, I'm not sure. It's, 30, it's 37 to 43. The Queen's the transfuse will help a little bit. You just have third Queen involved, even better. Uh, but the defender's advantage is never something you can overlook. I mean, for yep, those who don't it's know, like, huge. I mean, to express these but defenders advantage, guys, you might come in with even Roach Wars, and you might have even production, but it's going to take Lenok an extra 15 seconds just to walk across the map, where Sleep's right there. It's instant. He's got his reinforcements ready to go. So you can come in with, like, probably, I'd say at most, like, a 10 Roach deficit, and still feel pretty confident on the defense. After that, it comes down to micro and positioning control. Wait a second. Is he is he skipping 1-1 one, one in favor of Hydras again? He is. He's doing uh, it again. I swear I saw... Wait, am I mistaken? I swear I saw plus two on the way for sleep. Did he cancel it? No, I think or... it's, it's the stupid... The, the overseers that are going off left and right. Yeah, but he's not researching it anymore either, so... Oh. I think he canceled it. Wow, you're going to be right about that. Uh, small fight coming in the middle of the map. The Hydras have come out once again, I feel, a little too early. His DPS looks fantastic, yeah, uh... but the Roaches are starting to win out. But as he starts focusing down the oh. Hydras, this strips away the DPS. Yeah, really nice focus fire there from Lenok, but it seems like Sleep is holding on it. Maybe he's onto something here. The Hydras seem to be doing pretty well. I mean, he obviously believes in the style since he's doing it again. It wasn't a mistake that he skipped the upgrades. He's doing this on yeah. purpose, so he's trying to win with the Roach Hydra 1-1 one, one push here. Yeah, yeah, it's like some sort of all-in. Like, he wants to hit before Lenok has like 2-1 or 2-2, two, two, I guess. And he wants to like kill his opponent with it. And that's what he tried in last game. And this game, he's going to try and do it better with like better positioning. And it seems to be working okay, but oh, Queens get sniped out there on the right side. 
Yeah, nice these roaches, super, super, super secret agent roaches. They've been like constantly burrow and burrowing, trying to uh, get those heals in where they can, when they can. But he'll cut out the reinforcements. That means Sleek comes in with a half damaged army before the fight even begins. On even numbers in a defender's location. This is looking like it's got to be Leonard's hold. This, I just can't see Sleek breaking this. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, yeah, his numbers are going down now. Leenok with a hold. He's got loads of transfuses on that queen as well. Leenok wrapping around both sides. He's got the superior upgrades. And this is the problem with Sleep Style. Like, he forces himself into the situation. He can't do anything else but that. The upgrades now, what does he do? I wonder if yeah. this, if the Hydra Style coming out so early. Like, I wonder if this would benefit him more if he just waited. Oh, God, the, the rally. Oh, that's going to cost him. Like, this, guys, at this stage of the game, one or three roaches is a big deal. Early on, not so much. But this stage of the game, like, as a player who's going to heal their army to full, yeah, Tumbling Claws with that burrow, uh, the numbers are so, so important. Like, I was thinking, like, yeah, I, and I, there's I, no backup plan. The upgrades as well. Like, he's going to be behind an upgrades now, and he has to mass roach. Yep. We'll and it's going to be behind an upgrades. This is what I'm really curious to get your guys' thoughts on. Like, I, I really think this Hydra style would be fantastic if you play defensively with it, if you wait until he's maxed out with it. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I, I, was saying, I guess but... he just likes it as a timing. Like I'm, I'm sure he's practicing a ladder. He thinks it's pretty good, and he's just trying it now versus Leenok. But Leenok just, I mean, he's dealing with it well. But I'm, I'm sure it could be scary to play against this timing with Roach Hydra. But I mean, the the downside of it is that yeah, there is no backup plan because if you lose your like if your timing doesn't work, you're just gonna be behind an upgrade and it's gonna be hard to replace those Hydras. But he did remake some Hydras, but this is run by oh my god. Oh, he's gonna get the Roach for this is huge. This cuts out reinforcements directly. But this is a majority of Leonard's forces. So this almost props prompts into a base trade. We got Roacher sniping up Jones here at the third. He's gonna have to defend with what he has. We'll see if that's enough. The Hydras, in this instance, might just be enough damage. But he's gonna lose everything at home. I don't know, we'll see about that. He's engaging now over at the uh... Lenox side of the map and there's three roaches in the natural there's roaches in every single base actually on the map right now Sleeps moving in taking down the roach run as well. This is gonna be a funky game, but look at the supplies I mean eventually Lenox will be able to kill this army and he's, he's killing the drones faster as well All the drones are dead for sleep right now. Okay, except the ones that are running away Sleep running the drones away is really big in the base traits now because Lenox actually doesn't really have any outside the base Just the ones here at the third so, I mean, I think he's, if this is just a base trade like through through buildings and racing, I think Sleep loses. But if Sleep can somehow force a fight with a full army, he's going to obliterate it. Oh, he's found the drones. He's found the drones. But the Roach Horn for Linux is finishing now, so he's going to make 15 Roaches. And I think he's going to try and engage when those finish. Yeah. Entry in the main! <laughs> I guess he's going to try and take a fight. Okay, he's going to cancel them. Alright. Oh, he's finding up the third. Yeah, I mean, cool. Leenok, had he let anything here in the main complete, it was just going to bleed out. It would have been a waste of resources. So, I mean, it seems silly to cancel the Zerg, but I think in this particular instance, it's worthwhile. Tons of spine cars coming down. This is huge for Leenok. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Leenok's game. Yeah. Uh, 140 supply. How many I roaches? Think... He has 60 roaches against 38. So, whenever the engagement happens, Leenok wins it. Unless, unless Sleep can force Leenok to come up that ramp into the main. <laughs> That's yeah. the one situation where maybe Sleep has a chance, but as we see, he's just spread on the bottom. He's happy to continue. Yeah. Because what Leenok will probably do, if given the chance, just macro behind this. He's still mining! Yeah. And I mean, look at this. Uh, Leenok's bringing a queen over now to spread creep uh, outside his main, and he's gonna, uh, you know, put the spines down on this creep later, so that's cool. Oh my god, if he advances the spines, that's how he takes the ramp. You get the spines at the bottom to burrow as you start pushing, brute force yeah. it. I mean, the thing is, he's playing a little bit blind, right? Like, he doesn't quite know what the Army of Sleep looks like. We know that it's massively undervalued, uh, because of course we have God Vision and such, but for Leenok, there's no Overseer over here, there's no Overlord. He doesn't know what he'd be pushing into, so I really like that he's playing this pool. What I kind of hope, though, yeah. I hope the Overseer gets sniped and he just burrows up that ramp, if I'm going to be completely honest. I, I got a feeling this is going to go for like 10 more minutes as Sleep just tries to mine from these minerals, which have got... He's actually trying well, to mine! Oh no! There's like yeah, no there's, there's like... There's like 500... No, maybe not even five, 400 minerals. Yeah. He's not going to be able to get much from that. We want Leenok on two bases. Uh, actually, this is going to be so dumb. If this comes down to a situation of out macroing, quote-unquote, your opponent... I think yeah, Sleep's I mean, Wow, look at the Leenok macro, man. Hang on, hang on. I think Sleep's got the same <laughs> idea about the spines, though. Because look at this spiny pool coming down here. Not something you would normally see rushed out, but... Uh, I want to see spines, man. I want to see spines on the edge of this cliff. No, wow. he can't do that. <laughs> well, he's never going to I mean, he, can, he, can't, but... he can't do anything. Because, I mean, I don't know but why he hasn't yeah, left yeah. the game yet, to be honest. Because he's seen the drunk count of Leenok with the Overseer, so he knows Leenok is going to mine him out. 
So he has no, like it's, like it's no fan. What's he gonna do? <laughs> he's gonna roaches. I, gonna make there's a queen. Not minerals. <laughs> yeah, there's minerals to make like what? Three or four roaches? Yeah. What are they? Oh, 75, no, 25, right? Five here. He might get five. Oh, he's going, he's going there. What the hell? Nidus. Nidus? Nidus out of the main. <laughs> yeah. A cool move, but I don't think it's gonna matter. GG. Uh, GG.